Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're gonna do a review and teardown of this hot plate which was supplied for free by Banggood.com so thank you Banggood for sending me this product. So you would use something like this to preheat a PCB to prepare it for desoldering an IC or even for reflow soldering a board. As usual there will be links placed in the description below which I encourage you to check out. There is a 100 by 100 millimeter version at 450 watts and a 200 by 200 millimeter version which I have here. Uh, this one is rated for 850 watts. Inside the package we get the hot plate itself which looks very nice. It's shiny and new. We get a uh, user manual which uh, is in English and uh, Chinese as well and a uh, mains power cable which has an EU plug. If you haven't worked with a multi-layer PCB you might ask yourself why do you need to preheat a board? Well modern devices use a high number of internal PCB layers so desoldering something from those might be harder if you only heat the board from the top with hot air. It might take some time until the IC reach the soldering temperature because the heat is sucked away by the internal copper layers. This could be bad for the board and the IC because you will need to increase the temperature of your hot air station above the uh, normal temperature to compensate for that and in the process you might damage the board or the IC. Now such a tool allows you to bring the board to a uh, higher temperature uh, slowly without creating any hot spots and then you can just heat with hot air uh, maybe from the top to um, heat the, just the area where you need to work on. I don't do so much repair work here in the Vodlog lab but I do some assembly work for the prototypes I build and I plan to use this for uh, reflowing SMD boards. This will of course depend on the capability of the hot plate to reach the required temperatures for reflow. Who knows, I might even design a custom control board for this so that I could run a, a reflow profile automatically. It will not be as good as a reflow oven but good enough for prototyping work. Using such a hot plate for reflowing boards has an advantage over a reflow oven because you can clearly see what's happening and you can intervene if something is not right. You, if you got a component tombstoning or uh, moving out of alignment you can easily go in with a pair of tweezers and tweak that part before uh, the board is finished. Now I would like to start with a turnout to check how the unit looks inside, how the wiring is done uh, to see if there are any safety concerns. I think on Banggood they specify this as 850 watts but on the back of the product there is an 800 watts rating and a date code 2018 December 18th. Uh, one thing to note is that we have a fused uh, mains input uh, socket. So to get in this box I think we're going to have to remove these four screws and uh, remove the bottom cover. These uh, feet are made out of rubber, they're soft, which I always like to see on uh, equipment like this. They're not the cheap plastic ones. So let's see, can we remove the bottom plate now? Seems we do and we have a small transformer in here which is uh, powering our control board. This is a small 9 volt transformer which will probably output a couple of uh, 100 milliamps to power the uh, control board inside here. Now to give you a close up of the insides things uh, look good here like uh, everything is with the connectors the wires are not soldered so we can easily uh, remove and repair parts if necessary. Uh, there is heat shrink over these uh, connectors on the uh, mains input. Also right here on the uh, mains input socket we also have heat shrink over the connectors. We have a uh, nice uh, crimp connector here. I believe these are the heating elements and judging by the number of uh, wires I think we have four heating elements. This is uh, the control board. It does have a bit of uh, flux residue but uh, it doesn't uh, look 
uh, bad and I think this is the wire going to the uh, thermocouple which is attached to the hot plate measuring the temperature. So let's disconnect some of these wires and continue with the teardown. This is our control board. It's using a uh, cheap Holtec uh, microcontroller. Um, it has a good separation between the hot side and the uh, cold side. There is some uh, flux residue gunk left on the PCB, but this is uh, very common of, um, of this type of control boards coming from China. Uh, the caps are Chongex, uh, pretty uh, low quality, so if there is something to fail on this unit, I would bet there, these caps uh, would be failing, but it's easy to uh, go in here and replace them if necessary. Also, it's very easy to replace this with my own custom board and um, I could probably fit a uh, 0.96 inch OLED in the cutout for this uh, uh, LED segment. So I could probably design a control board that would fit in the same space and have much more functionality for this hot plate. It would uh, maybe offer a reflow profile, for example. One thing I uh, don't like is uh, well, they've done the uh, grounding, they have a crimp, uh, they've uh, uh, done it once here for the uh, bottom of the chassis and they have another point here that goes to the uh, top of the hot plate uh, through that screw I suppose, but there is paint on the case in the spot where they connected this, so I'm gonna fix that with a Dremel, I'm gonna scrape away the paint where the ground connection is, but other than that there is a uh, there is nothing to say bad about this uh, this construction. It's uh, I really like how it's uh, constructed. I wasn't expecting it to be so nicely done inside. Before scraping away the paint on that um, ground point, let's try to measure from the IEC uh, main socket up to a point on the metal chassis and uh, see what kind of resistance we're getting. Let's try to measure through this uh, screw hole and we're getting a uh, 0.1 ohms. So even though it has paint on that surface, it's not really a, uh, a bad grounding um, on this product uh, because it's just 0.1 ohms. After removing four of these uh, long bolts, we can finally separate the uh, bottom uh, side of this uh, equipment from the top which uh, represents the uh, hot plate and everything is uh, coming loose right now and this is our hot plate you see they use this uh, hollow type uh, standoffs to avoid transferring heat uh, as much as possible to the uh, bottom side of the unit and the heating element or uh, should I call them cartridges are inserted in these uh, holes in the aluminium uh, hot plate. We do have uh, a, a nice thermocouple attached directly to the uh, hot plate so it, this should be capable of measuring the temperature quite accurately and as I guessed uh, before there are in total four heating elements for this unit and I believe they're wired like a two in parallel and a two in series. So I quite like the construction of this uh, unit. Uh, it should be quite easy to uh, repair it if something goes wrong and you need to go in here. Also quite easy to hack and modify this unit according to your own needs. Now we have some degree of confidence that this thing is wired in a safe way so we can turn it on for the first time and maybe check some temperatures with an external thermometer to see how accurate the onboard display is. I have placed uh, the two thermocouples, one in the middle of the plate and one towards the side just to check the, uh, the uh, uh, temperature distribution. 
I do see we have a uh, calibration potentiometer on the front so if something is not accurate maybe maybe we can adjust it uh, from here and uh, it will be fine so let's turn it on it looks like it's uh, set for 100 degrees celsius I'm gonna let it uh, warm up let's see how many seconds it takes to reach 100 degrees celsius we kind of see a discrepancy between the uh, externally measured temperature and the onboard display temperature but uh, that might also be too poor coupling on the surface of the hot plate while the onboard thermocouple is attached better on the bottom of the um, hot plate so it's directly coupled towards the uh, heating elements I'm gonna put some pressure on this thermocouple Uh, the hot plate display says we've reached 100 degrees Celsius but the temperature is still climbing at the uh, top of the hot plate so I would say we're at least 10 12 degrees uh, uh, lower the on the actual temperature at the surface of the hot plate uh, when compared to the onboard display so let me try to adjust that uh, calibration uh, potentiometer So after adjusting that uh, calibration pot we're now getting a value which is uh, closer to the externally measured one we're measuring here 99.5 degrees celsius and the onboard display is showing 100 degrees now let's go up to 200 degrees and check again so the hot plate is showing that it has reached 200 degrees uh, celsius the external thermometer is uh, still uh, climbing there is about five degrees difference between the two measurements which in my opinion is acceptable for this kind of application uh, for reflowing or desoldering boards five degrees even 10 degrees celsius is not that important and the whole measurement loop and the thermocouple might not be uh, all that linear so while uh, adjusting the calibration for 100 degrees celsius might work fine it will not uh, provide the same results uh, in the upper range over 200 degrees celsius i'm also going to do a reflow test like i plan to use this uh, board and i'm going to start by showing you this uh, typical uh, leaded reflow profile this is for a kester solder paste so i am using leaded solder paste uh, because i'm doing hobby prototypes and you want to look at the profile which is good for the paste you are using in my case this is uh, the composition of the paste I'm using and uh, this is the profile that it needs to follow for a successful reflow so there are three, three main zones defined in this, uh, in this pro profile this is the uh, preheating zone, this is the uh, soaking and this is the actual reflow and each of these are defined with a uh, certain temperature and the time it takes to reach that temperature but in our case we're going to be simplifying things uh, we've noticed that this hot plate takes some time to reach uh, 200 degrees so we can we can consider these two phases like a single one and set the hot plate for 180 degrees uh, celsius and just drop the pcb on the plate and then until it reaches that uh, uh, 180 degrees uh, celsius temperature uh, this time would have passed and then i can just increase to peak temperature which is 230 degrees celsius and then uh, this time would have passed and the board will be uh, reflowed for the purpose of this test i'm going to use uh, this small pcb to which i have uh, manually added solder paste with a syringe which is not ideal because uh, the quantities uh, are not equally distributed on the pads but it uh, it should work i've uh, placed some 0603 resistors in there and if everything uh, goes fine we should see those uh, being reflowed so let's uh, start the plate and configure it for 180 degrees it's already at 100 degrees i'm going to pop the pcb on the hot plate and I'm going to change the camera angle to offer you a close-up picture of how the reflow happens as you can see the solder paste is uh, already soaking if we were to start from uh, 
from a cold hot plate it would have taken uh, longer for the soak phase which is fine but in this case the place the the plate was already at 100 degrees celsius so it's uh, it's obviously climbing faster towards 180 degrees celsius we see some fumes coming off the pcb that's fine that's the uh, flux which is uh, mixed inside the solder paste you would of course run this in a well ventilated area if you were to solder uh, more boards and actually this paste has a uh, low melting point and as you can see it's already reflowing and here are the problems that I was mentioning because the paste was distributed uneven to those pads uh, as they melt the surface tension was higher on one side than on the other so it pulls the SMD part uh, away from the other pad now let's increase the uh, temperature up to 220 degrees celsius i believe that will be sufficient for this paste and once it reaches that temperature we can uh, turn off the hot plate now it's really difficult for me to hold the camera and at the same time correct those smd parts so i'm gonna place the uh, camera in the mount let's see if i can uh, carefully fix those smd parts i was able to realign some of them now the plate is at 220 degrees celsius our reflow is complete so we can turn off the hot plate now you can leave the uh, pcb on the hot plate and let it naturally cool down uh, or if you take it away uh, make sure there is no rapid cooling of the PCB because you might stress the solder joints uh, if uh, the PCB cools faster uh, than it is allowed now these uh, solder joints might not uh, look great but uh, there was no time to do preparation I just wanted to show you how I would uh, reflow the, this board and I applied the paste manually with a syringe if I were to use a uh, solder stencil for example uh, it would be a different story because there would be an equal amount of solder paste on each of those pads so uh, this would not happen now to end this video I'm gonna say I'm pretty happy with uh, this hot plate how it's built how it's worked the construction is good the wiring is good and most importantly it's safe it has good grounding it does have an input fuse uh, which certain uh, brand name equipments which I won't name don't have but this one has certainly much better than what we are used to seeing coming from China uh, but also this one comes at a higher cost uh, because this unit is not particularly cheap though I suspect much of that price is due to a higher shipping cost because uh, of the weight and volume of the product but if you're in a market for a hot plate I recommend getting this one it's nicely built easy to repair or to modify should you need to do so like I mentioned in the beginning of the video it would be nice to create a custom control board for this hot plate so that you would have a reflow profile that you could just uh, load with the press of the button let me know what you think in the comments below the video thank you for watching subscribe hit the like button all that stuff that helps the channel grow and i will see you next week with a new video